Okay. Everybody ready again? It's going to get a little more complicated this week, okay? Last week was the easy week, I think. Okay. So this is section three, it's called control. What is that all about? Let's find out. Okay, the FCC issued it's called both a primary license, that's the call sign you have, a one DFO, that's my primary, and a control operator license, and that's the person who actually can push the button on the transmitter. You say, well, gee, that, that all makes sense. What's different about that? So let's say that you're Mr. Ted Turner. You live down in Georgia, and you want to have a television station. So you go to the FCC, and they give you a television station a call sign, WABC. But Mr. Turner is not allowed to turn the transmitter on to transmit the television station. He has to hire somebody who has a different kind of a license. So this is FCC talk. Okay? So in the world of amateur radio, we have a license that gives us a call sign, and we're allowed to push the transmitter button, which makes sense, obviously. Okay, so an amateur radio license has both an operator and primary license. The primary is the call sign. Okay? Uh, now, we're called the control operator. The control operator is a licensed amateur radio operator who is responsible for the station's transmissions and their license information is in the FCC database. Well, we know that. The FCC gave us our license. But the point is this. Once I get my call sign, I'm the control operator for this radio and I have to make sure that it's being used appropriately. That's what this question is all about. Okay? It's like say if you have a driver's license, it's in your driving. It's your responsibility to drive properly. Same thing. There must be a control operator whenever a station transmits. All well, you say, well, that makes sense. I mean, if someone's going to transmit with this, if I'm going to transmit, I'm going to be here, physically here. Well, that was the case years and years ago, but things have kind of changed now a little bit. Okay? The FCC presumes that the control operator of an amateur radio station is the station licensee. Yeah, they presume that it's it's me. You say, well, that makes sense. But you know, if you have a, if you own a car, and you have a driver's license, can someone else drive your car? Yes. Can someone else use my radio? Yes. So that's what this is about now, okay? <laughs> Hold your thought open for a second. So with technician license, you can be the control operator of transmitters that are fixed at my house, mobile in my car, portable, the HD. So I can have, just because I have a license, I can have radios in the house, in the car, portable, doesn't make any difference. Okay? Or a repeater, or even an amateur radio satellite. Now, we're going to talk about repeaters. It's a little complicated. But believe it or not, there are satellites which have repeaters on them. So once you understand what repeaters are, then you'll understand about satellites or repeaters. But you can only be the control operator of an amateur satellite if your license allows you to transmit on what's called the uplink. So memorize that answer for a second. In other words, there's certain frequencies that we use to talk to satellites that with your license you wouldn't be allowed to use. That's all that means. So now we're going to get a little complicated. What's a repeater? Well, with a little radio like this, someone was over here at Redondo Beach, Hermosa Beach, Torrance, and someone was over here on the other side of Palos Verdes, down at the Terran area or whatever. These two people with these frequencies could not talk to each other because of something you'll learn later, okay? These little radios don't go through hills, they don't go through mountains. Okay? So what happens is, uh, there's people who own what are called repeaters. And a repeater is a transmitter and a receiver. So if I'm down here in Hermosa Beach, and I go on a certain frequency and I transmit, my signals go in all directions. It's like turning on a light bulb. Where's the light go? Everywhere. So when I turn on my transmitter, hit the transmit button, the energy goes everywhere. Well, some of the energy goes up to the, side, to the top of Palos Verdes. <coughs> oh, it'll go inside of the antenna to this, let's say, repeater. It gets received. The receiver automatically puts that energy into the transmitter, and the transmitter rebroadcasts that signal in all directions on another frequency. Oh, so the person standing on the other side of Palos Verdes, if they're listening to that frequency, they can hear me. And when it's time for them to talk, they push their button, and their little radio switches to the other frequency. These are different frequencies, the F2, F1. And the same thing happens, and I hear that person talk. Okay? So that's how a repeater works. A repeater listens on one frequency, 
immediately <coughs> retransmits on another frequency, and that's how we get over the top of hills. If someone was on like the other side, would theirs go through the transmitter first and then to the receiver? No. no, no, no. The reason why is because when you transmit, once we set the radios up, when either one of us transmits, the radio automatically goes to that frequency. Automatically. Okay? So this receiver is always listening to that frequency. So when I hear something, it says, oh, I'm going to retransmit it on a different frequency. Okay? So the repeater listens on frequency number two, and that's called the re receiver's input. Input, ears, right? The, receiver, the repeater transmits on frequency F1, different frequency, and that's called a repeater's output. Okay, so ears, output, okay? Okay, now a repeater should be on the top of a tower, on the top of a hill, a building. On Palos Verdes, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of repeaters. And some of them have emergency power. So when it comes time to an emergency, how is the people in the LA County gonna to talk to each other through some of these repeaters? That's how it's gonna work, okay? Okay, so we will cover more of this in section eight when we get there, but right now that's basically a repeater. Just had to tell you about that just for a second. Okay, the reason we had to tell you about that is because when, re when repeaters came into the world, uh, a whole bunch of things changed as far as control operators. Are you ready? The control operator functions to perform at the control point. We say, okay, the control point's right here where you touch the button. Mm hmm, okay. Stations can be controlled uh, three ways, locally, remotely, and automatically. So let's see what that means. And this is all happening because of the world of repeaters. And we'll make it clear here in a second. Okay, locally, what's that mean? Physically present, here I am. I'm the guy that pushes the button. Okay, uh, I can push the button. Remotely, oh, controlling the station from another location. So for instance, the repeater that's up at my house, I don't own it. A friend of mine owns it. Well, how does the repeater get turned on and turned off? When someone transmits here, the repeater goes on and off, right? listens and it retransmits. Does the person who owns it stand outside of my house 24 hours a day, seven days a week? No, he lives down in Torrance. Well, how, how does he control it? Ah, they have special little, special little things inside the repeater that he can transmit to the repeater, hit a certain number of buttons, this little code. The repeater says, oh, that's my boss talking. And then you can hit a button that says, lower the power, increase the power, or shut off, or whatever. So he can control it from his house in Torrance. Wow. So this all came about with repeaters now, okay? So that's called remote control. So controlling a repeater from, from someone's house. And that house is not where the repeater is, obviously. And it's called automatic. The typical operation of a repeater, when a control operator is not present at a control point, and is at some other location other than the control point. What does that mean? Let's say that this guy in Torrance, eh, he's gonna be out of town. He can't, he can't hit the repeater. So he puts the, he, he codes up the repeater and says, you're in automatic mode. What does that mean? That means if the repeater senses any electrical problem, it shuts itself down. Okay, so there's, in the old days, when we didn't have repeaters, you had to be physically at the radio you with the control operator, but now things can be controlled remotely or automatically, okay? Okay, let's keep going. More about control. This thing about control gets complicated a little bit. As a station licensee, me, let's say, you can designate the control operator function to another licensed amateur radio operator who wants to use your equipment. So for instance, if you had a license, I could say, here, I'm gonna leave the room and go outside and go to my car and you're a ham radio operator, you want to use my radio, go ahead. See now, once this other person who's got a license has my radio, they're the control operator even though it's my, my radio. It's like saying to someone, you can drive my car. That means when they're driving the car, they're responsible, that's all. If you leave the station location, you and the designated control operator are equally responsible for proper operation of your station. So let me tell you what that means. <clears throat> Let's say I leave the radio here. Okay, and I'm going to go outside for half hour. And someone in here is an ham, ham radio operator. Can you just come over and grab my radio and use it? Well, what it says is, if I leave this location, uh, and I make you the designated control person, 
then we're both responsible that the thing worked right. So if all of a sudden she screws around and does something that's not right, yep, she's got a problem legally, but so do I because it was my radio and I let her use it. Okay? That's all what that means. The transmitting privilege of an amateur station determined by the license class held by the operator. That's true. When you get your technician license, and as you'll see in the next section, the certain frequencies you can use. Now, this radio <coughs> goes on a lot more frequencies than you are allowed to use with a technician license. So if you are using this radio on the frequencies you're going to be allowed to use, that's good. But you're not allowed to go and transmit on the frequencies you're not allowed to use. And that's what that means right there. Okay. This, is, uh, you, this is the transmitting privilege of, uh, of the amateur station is determined by the license class you have okay, of the control operator. So I can use this on all the frequencies because I have a license to do it. But when you get your technician license, you can only use it on the frequencies that are good for technicians. Uh, if you have a technician license and you visit a station with an extra license, and that's the highest license there is, then as long as that person is present, they're the control operator, uh, and you can use that person's privileges, but you must use their call sign. So for instance, if you were, let's say I had this radio on, well, I'm the control operator, and we can use all the privileges that I have. Now, as long as I'm physically here, I can let you transmit on those frequencies, but you have to use my call sign because it's an extra class, not yours, which is the technician class, and that's what that means. It says, but if that person leaves, that's me, then you are the control operator, she'd be the control operator, and you can only use your technician privileges and not the extra privileges, and you would use your call sign, not my call sign. So it all makes sense, okay? And so here's a couple pictures of this. So there's no questions here, these are just pictures. It says, if you let a hand with a higher license operate your station, they can use their privileges, but they have to use their call sign, their, their call sign. So here's a, here, let me just walk through this. Let's say there's three of us, and there's me and my radio, and I have the extra class, and Sue has the general class, and Tom has the technician class. As long as I'm physically here, okay, we can all use this radio with my call sign and use all of my privileges. You can push the button. But once I physically leave, oh, then, the control operator technically is Sue. Now, you can still use my radio, but you can only use Sue's privileges. Once Sue leaves, Tom can use the radio, but he can only use his privileges, and he has to use his call sign. So that's kind of a picture of what it's all about. Okay, more about the control operator. So if you're transmitting to a repeater and there's music in the background, then the music is being retransmitted through the repeater, which is against the FCC rules. That's correct. The FCC says, I can talk to you, but I'm not allowed to let music be transmitted. Now, what you're going to find out in a minute is, for every rule, there's an exception. But basically, I can't sit here in this room, be talking to somebody, and have the radio on in the background, because the music gets retransmitted. So that's not, not illegal. Says you're responsible, you are responsible for the music, not the hand who owns the repeater. So let's say I'm let's say I'm talking to you through a repeater. Okay, and there's music in the background. Well the repeater doesn't know, it just knows there's a signal going up to it and, and it retransmits it. Well the repeater's retransmitting my voice and it's retransmitting music. But if you own the repeater, it's not your problem. It's my problem, the one who's transmitting to the repeater that's putting the music through it. Okay? That's what that means. It says, under normal circumstances, you cannot receive compensation for operating your radio. We've talked about that before. You can't be getting, you can't be getting paid to use your radio. Uh, however, when we do communications for events like the marathons and the, the 5 and 10K races and stuff like that, we typically get a t-shirt like all the other volunteers who work the event. Okay, maybe they'll give us that water or something. So the t-shirt's not considered monetary uh, compensation. It's just... It's what all the volunteers get. So when we work an event, we're one of the many volunteers, and we'll all get the same thing, maybe 